have Roger there, and have Bill there, and have Sherrod, and Ted, and the mayor, just a, a flat out offensive on the International Trade uh, Commission because this is so important. And when we think about the future of our community, the opportunities that lie before us, there is a revolution coming in green technology. But that means steel mills need to produce steel. They go into windmills. They go into solar panels. This is the future of our country. And if we let the Chinese continue to dump their product on our country, we'll see another revolution that would happen in America, technology-wise, that we would miss. And that's what these tariffs are all about, is about giving middle-class people in the United States of America the opportunity to put in hours, to make a good wage, to get health care, to feed their family, to go on vacation, to send their kids to school, to pay taxes, to support the schools and the libraries, and everything that ripples throughout our community because of good paying jobs. That's what this is all about. And we've had a spirit of cooperation, I think, here uh, in the last couple of years with local officials, federal officials, state officials that we haven't seen in 30 years. And what happens is General Motors Lordstown, the fact that BNM is even looking to do business here because of the cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce and the local officials and state officials, people want to do business here now. But if our federal policies don't allow for local companies to grow, then we're going to continue to miss the boat. But this position, and I will say this um, before I introduce my good friend Sherrick, um, President Obama has done more for manufacturing in the last year than any president has done in the last 30 years. He slapped a tariff on tires, he slapped a tariff on uh, these, the steel here, helped with the General Motors restructuring to make sure the uh, auto industry stays alive and well. Um, there is a new commitment now, and we're not done. And I think you know we couldn't ask in this community for a better advocate in the United States Senate than the one we have. There is nobody who has been more aggressive on trade issues in the United States Congress, both in the House and now in the Senate, than Sherrod Brown. On every single issue, I remember when I first got into the House, organizing against the trade agreements that were coming, not just giving lip service against trade, but making sure we could try to pull the votes together to knock down some of these trade agreements. And I think now having him in the Senate as a strong voice for us uh, in the Mahoning Valley is, is significant. We're very, very lucky to have him. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you, uh, steel workers, IBW members, non-union workers in Wheatland. Thank you, management people, all of you for being here. Um, special thanks to everybody on the, on the panel. Tim Ryan, uh, Tim is just a terrific advocate for the Valley. He's brought an energy to this Valley, as you know, working with the mayor, working with uh, the state senator, working with the commissioner, working with uh, all of you uh, in a way that, that, that few, few House members do. How, how people go off to Washington so often as congressmen and they kind of become Washington and Tim is always, always, always advocating for the Valley. It's just it is and uh, Roger, thank you, and Bill, thank you. You're, you're, you're being part of the International Trade Commission testimony uh, with George and the steel workers that, that came to Washington that day. Um, absolutely matters when they when they heard from you, when they saw when they when they saw the the strength of the support, when they heard what. All of us said about what's happening with Chinese steel and how American workers are absolutely competitive if given the opportunity. It was no surprise that it was a six to nothing vote for the International Trade Commission. And these six commissioners, five of them, are also all, three of them are Republicans, three of them are Democrats. Uh, they've not been, um, they've not always been great advocates for American workers. This commission, uh, this commission was appointed. Most of them were appointed several years ago. Um, they have been on top of this in the last year. I mean, I've walked well, in the last three or four years. They have made um, six decisions uh, in support of American workers. Four of them were turned down by the White House um, back before, to, uh, back before uh, in, in earlier in the decade. The last two decisions the ITC has made, this one was six to nothing. The entire case that Tim talked about was supported to uh, in support of American workers and American communities and American companies. And, uh, in each case, it's going to mean jobs. The Finley, the, the Finley Cooper Tire case was supported to. It was clear that the Chinese were dumping tires. They were what was called the trade term is 
surging tires into our market. Uh, they, they, they subsidize their cost of their energy. I don't think you guys did. Government subsidies the cost of your energy. They were subsidized in other kinds of things. They have a currency issue in China. It makes it impossible to compete because it's not a level playing field. You make that level, that playing field level, as this tariff, as Tim Ryan said, this tariff does, that American workers can compete and can win in that competition. Almost as soon as that decision was made on the Finley Cooper tire uh, case, uh, with the Chinese dumping of tires within literally a couple of weeks, 100 people, 100 steel workers used to be rubber workers. As you know, 100 steel workers in Fenley, Ohio were hired, and some non union production workers in southern states that are connected with Cooper Tire were also hired. So we know that it's a different day. That's why this is a really, really big deal. And it's pretty simple. More and more of our government officials, including at the White House now, understand and, and ask that question. If we will ask in 10 years if we do nothing, and that question is, why did we give our industrial base away to another country? And that's what we done, did 10 years ago. That's what we did five years ago. That's what, in spite of the efforts of people like Tim Ryan and others, that's what's been happening in this country far too often. You know the trade deficit. You know the jobs that have gone to China. The fact that twice this year now, two significant cases, one on tires, one on, on uh, country tubular steel, or uh, is, is, is oil tubular steel, or steel that, that, that both cases these are going to be jobs. In this case, Mahoney Valley, in the other case, in places around the country. The, the, the last thing I wanted to mention is how, how important it is that our country um, begin to put together a real manufacturing strategy. We're the only country in the world, we're the only rich industrial country in the world that doesn't have a manufacturing strategy. It just thinks, well, manufacturing will happen or it won't let the market work. Well, no other country does that. No other country really lets the market work that way. The subsidies of energy, the other kinds of non called non tariff barriers, all the kinds of things they're doing to keep our products out. Tim and I were just talking this um, this uh, the, the, the uh, cash for clunkers program that that um, is pretty wide open in this country. It's clearly helped our steel industry, clearly helped our auto industry. But we opened it up. We shouldn't have, but we opened it up to auto makers all over the world. Well, in Japan, stories are just coming out, no surprise, reports coming out of Japan that, that their cash for clunkers program that they're doing in their country, the U.S. Com car companies can't get in, U.S. manufactured autos can't get in. So we've got a, I don't, I don't want trade wars, I don't want protectionism, but I know we have a $2 billion a day trade deficit, meaning they're buying $2 billion less from them than we're buying from us than we're buying from them. You know that's not good for our country. It's not good for our, for our workers. It's not good for our companies. It's not good for our small manufacturers. It kills our communities. I grew up in a town just like Warren Mansfield, Ohio, and they've had the same kind of uh, devastation from lost jobs. And that's why this is such an important decision today. So again, thank you, all of you, all of you as, as very productive American workers, and both union and non-union. Um, thank you to management for what they did. Thanks for being part of this effort with the International Trade Commission. We're going to keep the pressure on. We're going to keep pushing to enforce trade laws. We now have a White House that's going to that's going to say, go ahead and do this. We want to work with you. That's going to make all the difference for the city of Warren, all the difference uh, in, in B&M Star, all the difference for Wheatland, all the difference for